All right, Reed Cool Set, welcome back to the Single Track Podcast. Yeah, good to be back, then. So, for listeners that are not familiar with you, we did do a podcast back in February, a great one. I'll link to it in the show notes. We went into your background as a former full time Olympic level marathoner in Canada, your transition to our sport, all that good stuff. Um, Got to say, it was great to meet you finally in person at the Canyons 100K. Uh, earlier this spring as well. I I thought you had a pretty good race. And um, I guess I'll ask you this first question. I guess from my standpoint, it looks like the last six months for you have been this great, like learning experience in our sport, Um, having been at the top of another sport and then learning this one. And I'm curious, has it felt like a progression to to you? And what have been some of the biggest takeaways during this time? Yeah, I've learned a lot. So my first ultra back in August, um, was rough, but it went well at the same time. So I learned a ton. Um, and then, yeah, this starting this year train was going pretty well, went to black Canyon, um, learned a ton, um, about maybe not doing a desert race coming from Canada in February. Um, but no regrets. Cause I really needed the experience, um, on a longer course, net downhill, um, just that sort of terrain versus just getting out of the snow was great. Mm. Um, And then, yeah, then I had canyons, um, which went, um, I would say pretty according to plan, except for just feeling awful at the end. (laughs) Um, but I ran well within myself, um, and felt really good through 70 K maybe 80 K. Um, but yeah, fueling for such a long race, um, is, is, has been a bit of a learning curve, um, running technical downhills is still a lot to learn there, um, get used to. And, um, yeah, it, it has been, it's, it's been, I mean, it's been a lot of fun just learning new things and trying to figure out new things. Um, it, it's similar to when I started marathoning back in 2009, just coming from the track, it, it was just like a whole refresh and it's been the same, same for the past, well, 12 months now. Mm. What do you feel like you are taking confidence from heading into Western States? Um, not, not a whole heck of a lot, honestly. Um, last year at this time, I would have been a lot fitter. Um, I just had a couple health hiccups, uh, in the last couple months, COVID and then, um, uh, cellulitis. Mm. So like, uh, that came from, I got poison Oak at canyons. Um, which was fine. It was just uncomfortable. But then one of the open sores, it was just open for days and it ended up getting infected. Oh. So pretty, like kind of like a staph infection yeah. and that just shut me down for a while. So that, that was in, um, in May. So less than ideal prep. So I didn't, I don't really have that fitness that I thought would be my kind of ad- advantage in going into a race like this. Yeah. Um, but you know, but having said that, like i I feel really good lately. Like the last month has been really good. Just bodies come around and, um, I feel solid. And from where I was a year ago, I've just been running a lot more elevation, uh, on technical trails, stuff like that. So, um, I'm still, but I'm still like new to that too. So (laughs) I wish I would have had that, like that kind of like that marathon fitness heading into, uh, Western States. But, um, I'm really just happy with, with how I feel lately on the previous episode that we did back in February, I asked you if your entrance into our sport has inspired any fellow marathoners that you trained with back in the day to, uh, maybe convert or at least try something here in our world. And I'm curious, has anybody been following your Western States build up and thinking like, I want to do this too. And they've reached out to you. Um, yeah, there's been a few people uh, like asking me about getting, yeah, getting into some like longer trail stuff. Um, maybe we'll see what happens after Western States, if people want to do this or not, if it looks, if it looks horrible, if it looks really rough or, or if it looks fun. Um, but yeah, people, yeah, people asking me about, you know, what races, um, to do. And I'm still like, you know, very new to that, to the whole racing scene. And I feel like I, like there's races that pop up every week now that I follow a lot more, uh, ultra trail people on, um, on Instagram, I'm just learning about 
like, it feels like I'm learning about new races every few weeks. So, um, but yeah, we got some good ones in Canada for local stuff that I, I see some road people, um, tackling. I think you did what about 10 hours at the Canyon Thunder K that would have been either that or black Canyon would have been your longest race today is, is going, you know, 16, 17, 18 hours this coming Saturday. Will that be the longest time on feet for you ever? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. So my first ultra was, was I actually ended up running about 115 K. Gotcha. Um, and that was 14 and a half hours. Okay. Um, so yeah, Western States will be my longest run, um, af- from, from QMT. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah I'm, yeah, I'm really looking, I'm nervous. I'm excited. Uh, I, I, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun out there and I know I'm gonna have some low points too. Um, so I'm just kind of prepping for everything. Can we talk for a bit about race strategy and expectations? Like, do you have any plans in place in terms of like where you want to be at a certain time at a certain spot in the course, stuff like that? Like how you, like maybe talk about from a competition standpoint, how you're approaching the race. Yeah. I mean, there's so many unknowns just given that this is my first hundred miler ever. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to look and see how different people run the course and my, my tactic for the first hundred K is pretty much survival. Just make sure I feel good, as good as I can, um, and not get carried away. I think there's a lot of people that will race this fairly smart. Um, so maybe I'll try to key off of them, but I think for the most part, I, I'm going to have to run my own race and just listen to my body. You know, obviously, you know, fuel is going to be important. Cooling strategy is important, but for me, um, not thrashing my legs on the downhills, um, will be crucial. And so I can't really follow other runners cause, um, I'm sure if I try to follow them on the downhills, it will just destroy mm. me. So I, I'm going to have to really just feel it out and, and be smart. The last question I have for you here, I see you're wearing a stoked out shirt and I think a CLE hat. What does your, uh, race day gear setup look like? Yeah. Well, obviously Stoked Oats got me this, uh, sponsored spot. So, um, stoked with that, obviously. <laughs> uh, so eating that morning of as, uh, as I usually do Solomon ultra glide, uh, are the shoes I'll be wearing. Um, I ran the, the last, uh, I've, I've run, I've run all my, um, ultras this year in the ultra glide. And uh, once I up a half a size, my feet have been really happy in those. Um, and I feel good running on, you know, when, if it's, if it's flat, I need to pick up the pace. They're good. And they got enough cushion. Um, the Solomon, I can switch out vests, uh, through aid station, like the crude aid stations. I have the, the Solomon vest I like the most, I think is the sense one. I also have the active skin for, hmm. um, yeah. CLA white hat. I'll be wearing white, white Solomon top. Try to keep, you know, keep out of the sun and, and uh, keep the sun off me as much as I can. I got to give a thumbs up to the Ultra Glide. I've been a wearer of Hoka and Ultra Shoes my whole short Ultra life, but f- somehow got a pair of uh, Ultra Glide sent to me about a week ago. Used them on a couple runs, and they're excellent. That's an interesting Western State shoe. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I thought about maybe uh, like I tried a couple of the Pulsar mm-hmm. shoes, which you know feel a bit faster. Um, but you know, being my first hundred mile or two, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go on the light side of shoes. I'd rather have a bit more cushion. Besides the, uh, the Canyons hundred K, um, race you did, I guess, which was in reverse on the course. Have you spent any time on the course at all? Like, did you go to that Western States training camp back in, uh, Memorial day weekend? No, I didn't. Um, yeah, I, so I was kind of contemplating between one of the two of those and ultimately I wanted to one have a longer effort um and so that's why i chose canyons and also then i could see the course at least the train of the course a little earlier on um kind of get that in my head and also try to mimic some of the training that i could sort of um mimic like around yeah. me so that's why i, I didn't want to come out both both weekends it's just a lot of travel um to come out to california um so yeah i ultimately chose canyons and yeah i, I think um got a decent sense of what, what those, what the trails are like and what the hills are like, even if it was in reverse. Cool. 
Well, Reed, it's uh, it's been great to have you in the podcast. Our only uh, two time, what's the word? You've been on the podcast twice, and you're the only person to do that. So kind of cool. Hopefully, this is not the last. And I am cool. super excited <laughs> to follow your race a week from today. This is States Week. This is exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, not not much longer to go. It's taper time, and uh, feeling pretty good. Cool. Well, until next time. Great. Thanks for having me.